Hi, good morning, everybody, and welcome to day two of the anti slap conference. My name is Susan Coftry. I'm project director at the Foreign Policy Center, and I'm really delighted that we are holding this conference uh, on the topic of countering legal threats against media freedom with our partners, the Justice for Journalists Foundation. Had a really packed agenda yesterday, starting with a keynote speech from Baroness Kennedy, going into four panels with lots of journalists uh, talking about their own experiences uh, before having a wonderful evening event with Claire Rucastle-Brown and Paul Radu, two fantastic investigative journalists who faced considerable legal threats, but also here in the UK. Um, I just wanted to reflect on a couple of points uh, that I really picked up on yesterday from two journalists and, and lawyers who, who spoke about what was happening. One of them said, uh, the process itself is the punishment. And someone else said, the only thing worse than the threat is the reality. And I think that that really seemed like the theme, what was coming through from the different journalists who spoke um, about their experiences. And despite you know, the, the range of topics that these journalists are investigating, um, the jurisdictions that they're working in, the exact laws uh, that they're being targeted with, and the tactics used on them, uh, and, and also those bringing them uh, against them, um, the impact on, on the journalists and media freedom felt pretty much the same. Um, and I think that's a key thing. Hopefully this, this conference is supporting that sharing of experience and understanding. Something that really struck me, um, despite wherever the journalist was in the world, and we had a, a huge range yesterday, from South America to India, from Australia, and all across Europe, that there's a significant psychological impact and an impact on the journalist's well-being that comes along not only just with the legal uh, threat, which is often given a veneer of legitimacy because it's a legal process, but so many of them mentioned how they were also impacted at the same time by smear campaigns and other forms of harassment. They also mentioned that getting legal counsel can be stressful and expensive and challenging, especially if you're not being uh, sued in your own jurisdiction. But beyond the costs of all of that, it was quite staggering to hear some of the damages that uh, these legal cases are being put forward, millions. Um, and I personally cannot imagine what that must be like to uh, receive a, a legal letter and be threatened with you know, 13, 14, 15 million pounds worth of damage. Um, and then contrasting that with some of the costs, uh, Steve Canan from Australia, who spoke yesterday, mentioned that um, one of the lawyers that was um, you know, questioning him during his court case, in the three days that uh, this lawyer was, was questioning him, earned as much, if not more, than Steve himself had while writing his book, which took him four years. Um, so, you know, that kind of inequality of arms um, and just the unfair playing field, um, I think is something that has come out pretty strongly from yesterday. Um, today, we've got a series of panels, uh, four more, um, and we're very excited to have uh, more journalists speaking about a range of issues and particularly looking at that question of the enablers and the lawyers who are involved. And then, you know, how this same system can be used not just against journalists, but can be seen as a, a broader lawfare tactic against public interest bodies, including law enforcement agencies, um, as we've seen here in the UK. Uh, the last panels this afternoon are going to look at the impact uh, on journalists and society and see what happens not, you know, just to the journalists themselves, um, which sometimes we don't see, but sometimes we, you know, sometimes we do hear about. Um, and then the actual impact on society, which is often the forgotten part of the story. Then lastly, we will be uh, hearing from maybe a, hopefully an optimistic point of view, which is what can we do to change this issue? Um, and particularly here in the UK, and members of our UK anti slap working group will be launching some proposals um, and suggestions which we are going to open up to public consultation. Um, before all of that, I'm really delighted to say that we have uh, another fantastic keynote um, to officially open day two with Professor Dario Milo, 
um, who is a partner at Weber Wetzel Attorneys in Johannesburg, and he's a member of the High Legal uh, Panel of Legal Experts. So he will be uh, using his keynote to talk about the legal responses to slaps and um, using the common law to slap back. So uh, delighted he will be joining us just shortly um, to give the official open to day two. If you miss anything again from day one, please do come to our website. Everything will be there. Thank you.